Hello, I'm Josh Landau, the president of the International Insurance Society. Today, I'm pleased to announce the results of the 2023 Global Priority Survey, which was distributed to over 20,000 global C-suite executives and senior leaders. At the International Insurance Society, we are committed to being a diverse and inclusive platform for the global insurance and risk management community, providing knowledge, research, thought leadership, and connectivity to support the betterment of society. The Global Priorities Survey is an extension of our mission in that we seek to provide thought leadership to the global industry on the topics that are most important to executives. The Global Priorities Survey drives our thought leadership offerings throughout the year and forms the backbone of our signature event, the Global Insurance Forum, which we are pleased will return to a live format this year from November 5th through the 7th in Singapore, and for the first time will be co-hosted with our sister company, the Pacific Insurance Conference. We collaborated to develop the survey with our parent organization, the Institutes, and several other business units, including the Insurance Information Institute, Insurance Thought Leadership, and the Pacific Insurance Conference. Respondents were asked to select their top three priorities across six categories of external and internal threats which included economic, political and legal, social and environmental, operational, technology and innovation, business and financial. Today, I would like to highlight the key themes and then have a discussion on the topics with Andreas Berger and John Spence. Andreas is the Chief Executive Officer of Swiss Re Corporate Solutions and the International Insurance Society Executive Council Chair. John is a Senior Advisor and chair of the 2023 Global Insurance Forum Advisory Board, and most recently with Generali Asia. The 2023 survey showed that executives' top priorities have remained steady over the previous three years. Within their respective categories, the top priorities have remained climate change, cybersecurity, competition for talent, and data security. In addition to the top priorities, inflation has been the top economic priority for the past two years, following the decline of executives prioritizing the pandemic recovery. Similarly, as concerns over competition from outside the insurance sector have waned, expense management has emerged as the top business and financial priority. Executives feeling increasingly prepared and having a stable set of priorities seems to be paying off as executives report a higher sense of preparedness year over year across each of the top priorities. And for example, in 2021, 83% of executives who were prioritizing cybersecurity said that they felt their company was prepared to do so. By 2023, that number increased to 94% who reported feeling prepared. Similarly, in 2021, 62% of their company was prepared to address the effects of climate change. And by 2023, 78% said the same. This increase in preparedness holds true across all the top priorities, including inflation, competition for talent, data security, and expense management. The study also revealed that pandemic concerns are quickly fading. Three years after the outbreak of COVID-19, concerns over pandemic-related issues have shown some of the sharpest drops in prioritization. And for example, 46% of executives were prioritizing a hybrid workforce in 2022, but that number has now dropped to 14% this year. In 2021, the pandemic response was the top economic priority, with 63% of executives saying that the pandemic recovery was one of their top three economic issues. In 2023, however, the pandemic is a top three priority for only 11% of executives, making it the least selective economic priority. Many executives voice concerns over attracting employees to the industry to replace an aging workforce. Even though prioritization of competition for talent has declined somewhat, down from 54% of executives in 2022 to 42% this year, it remains the top operational priority. Finally, uh, geopolitics and instability loom large on the minds of executives with social and political instability and geopolitical conflicts joining cybersecurity as their top three political and legal priorities. Nearly a quarter of executives reported that 
backsliding democracies was a priority for them in 2023. But more than half said that their company was unprepared to address it. Instability and geopolitical conflicts also had high rates of unpreparedness, 27% and 29% respectively. The economic issues facing insurance executives in 2023 continue to be a global one in scope. Economic inflation, cybersecurity, climate change, data security, and competition for talent are, are not unique to any country or region. By coming together on such important topics, we can continue to make a more meaningful impact today on society. As an international organization, we believe it is important to get a global perspective, and we are pleased that Andreas could join us from Switzerland and that John is joining us from Hong Kong. Gentlemen, thank you for participating today. Let's start with inflation. Andreas, since it was selected as the highest priority by executives this year, uh, in fact, it has been the highest priority among all categories for two years now. And at the same time, we saw a drop in executives prioritizing long-term growth. Do you see a correlation between interest rate concerns and executives not prioritizing long-term results? And if so, what impact do you think that this will have long-term on the industry? And if not inflation, what factors do you think is leading to long-term growth being deprioritized? Thank you very much, uh, Josh, for having me here. And also, John, uh, looking forward to, to discussing with you. Um, let me talk about inflation and then, you know, come to the interest rate topic. Uh, inflation should remain a top concern for executives this year and beyond, by the way. Global inflation rates are easing more slowly than really desired or, yeah, what we could wish for. And uh, this mainly will impact the claims costs. Uh, the Swiss Re Institute uh, expects the headline CPI to ease from an average of 8.4% in 22 to 6% in 2023, which is still above the pre-pandemic average uh, levels and well above the central bank uh, targets of 2% that is still out there. You know, In the US, we forecast headline CPI to average 4.1% this year, down from 8% last year. But inflation is also showing signs of greater persistence and stickiness when looking at the core CPI, which means we exclude then the volatile energy and food components in the CPI basket. So regarding other forms of inflation to watch besides CPI, there's definitely wage inflation. This will be key to monitor. Tight labor markets are keeping wage inflation above trends in the US and Europe, which is also you know, uh, feeding into consumer prices, namely in services. Now, executives in service industries, like uh, ourselves in insurance, uh, where labor is the key input, will have to really watch this. Inflation is also set to stay structurally higher over the longer period. And, uh, and uh, this is also due to the acceleration of mega trends, you know, like COVID, uh, the war in Ukraine. Um, and that also includes deglobalization, decarbonization, energy transition, et cetera. So, so um, public spending, you know, uh, we haven't uh, spoken about and, and debts. Now, if you think about interest rates, uh, the benefit of higher interest rates will materialize for insurers, but this is only over time and not immediately. Now, insurers will benefit from higher interest rates once maturing bonds are reinvested into higher yield bonds. And this is positive for the overall profitability. However, you know, in the near term, higher bond yields imply a lower value on the current bonds that are held in the existing investment portfolio. Uh, in central bank's interest rate hiking cycle, you know, the ease uh, first phase, uh, as, uh, as we can call it, of interest rates, uh, the tightening is over and central banks now are navigating a more complex second phase with increased trade-offs you know, between raising interest rates and uh, tackling the inflation with this versus seeing increasing financial stability risk. That's uh, what we see if we look at inflation and the interest rate balance. Excellent. Thank you for that, Andreas. John, let's, uh, let's uh, ask you uh, one in terms of artificial intelligence. We have seen a rise in artificial intelligence as a priority, which I don't think will surprise anyone and in fact, if the survey would have been taken this month, I think that we would have seen an even greater priority in this area. 
I'm interested uh, in which areas of the industry you think that this will impact most. And also, do you see a regional difference in how AI is being utilized? Well, thanks, Charles. It's great to be on, on this uh, panel with uh, Andreas. Um, AI is going to have a fundamental impact on the insurance industry. Uh, and we're already seeing, uh, as, as you rightly point out, GPT-4 uh, came out, I think, last week. And it is a rapidly changing landscape. And I think many of us are sitting back and thinking, what is the impact? Whether it's around the way that we handle uh, our clients, our agents, uh, uh, the engagement uh, that we will have on an ongoing basis, the work that that AI can have in the way we assess claims and process uh, the, the work with our, our clients. It, it's going to be fundamental. Is, is it going to be regional? Of course, it's going to be regional. Uh, national governments will take a different perspective on how to handle AI. Um, for example, even in Hong Kong today, I can't access GPT uh, three or four uh, through uh, without a VPN. Uh, and uh, with, with, uh, with many countries taking the view uh, that they should restrict uh, their citizens to access to uh, this technology. Um, it also will, I think, accelerate, we'll find it accelerating the impact of uh, cybersecurity uh, as bad actors use uh, AI in a way that may uh, attack uh, insurance companies and their clients, uh, a real I issue here. There may be a, a range of social impacts. We've already started seeing professional firms downsizing their, their particularly their legal staff, uh, as a result of AI and the work that AI can do. Just go on and 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 check some answers. Even to this question, AI is actually very good at sort of anticipating uh, what the key issues are. Uh, but certainly, there will be challenges and risks for insurance companies as AI becomes more and more uh, integrated into the way we live. Thank you for that. Andreas, let's talk a little bit about geopolitical conflicts. And as concerns over the global pandemic recede, worries about instability from geopolitical conflicts are increasing. In 2021, only 5% of executives reported this as a concern. This year, 47% are prioritizing it. And this leaves many executives feeling unprepared for the impact that international conflicts could have on the insurance industry. The rising concern in geopolitical conflict is going to affect not only the global insurance industry, but specifically the regions you represent. Can you speak to how the conflicts have impacted your business and what is being done to proactively address this concern? No, um, absolutely. Um, the world economy has been un undergoing paradigm shifts that will have uh, very profound long-term policy implications. You know, with COVID-19 pandemic uh, and also the war in Ukraine, uh, just to mention just a few examples coming uh, quick succession, um, the, the, the state of flux and uncertainty now permeates uh, the global economic uh, system. That's, that's very clear. We expect this to lead to renewed focus on real economy issues with uh, three main drivers uh, shaping the development of a multi-polar new world order. Number one, it's a reorientation of global supply chains to insulate economies against future trade disruptions. That's what we see. Number two, added impetus to the green transition given worries of uh, energy security that Russia's invasion of Ukraine has sparked. And number three, the potential risk of global food security. Now, the insurance industry is also undergoing paradigm shifts like the overall economy. And we see continuous hardening expected in PNC given severe claims inflation in a high and persistent inflationary environment. We spoke about this before. And looking forward to 2023, it may be a sweet spot for underwriting profitability as rate increases are expected to continue. Now. So that's definitely something we see on the motor, but also on the property alliance of businesses, uh, uh, just to mention an example. And then after many years of low interest rates, inflation and monetary policy tightening are driving rates higher. This is per se positive for insurance companies. This will improve the investment returns and momentum and spur more capital intense growth and productivity in the real economy. And then lastly, 
in the light of the current banking crisis, the financial market turmoil, the PNC insurance business model is robust. You know, it's the robustness that we need to underline, you know, and in comparison in particular to the financial sector segments that we have seen are going through a very, very tough time. Now, implications for the business, for corporates and insurers, a big concern is what I call the one plus three, one plus three. The first is business interruption, with all, which also includes supply chain risks and where this is uh, coming from and what's being seen in the market. Number two is the cause of geopolitical risks, or you can say war also. And number three is the climate related impacts. And then on top of this are issues like cyber risk that are always mentioned. And then also, as you said, the number one topic, inflation. So this is the heightened tension in the C-suite that we're all dealing with, that keeps us awake at night. And the interconnectedness of all of this doesn't make it easier. Hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. John, let's turn now to talent and technology. And technology and talent issues continue to loom large. And many executives are focused on addressing the talent gap. In particular, they are looking to attract a modern workforce that can lead on emerging technology issues like uh, art artificial intelligence that you mentioned before, and, uh, virtual reality, and data analysis. What do you think the industry needs to do to attract and retain the right talent to meet the future workforce needs? Well, well, Josh, it's, it's, it's clear that we need to radically rethink uh, the new world that's coming and the exponential growth. You just think the distance between GPT-3 and GP-4 was just a few months and, we're ex and the significant improvement that's occurred just in those few months. So the, these progressions are almost unimagined. Uh, so insurers need to be thinking very carefully about the people they have on their teams that are equipped to understand the transformational issues associated with AI in, in, the risk, in the risk business. Um, we should be investing in people that are undertaking the research, that doing the opportunities to develop uh, the use cases uh, for AI in the insurance business, that are improving customer service, that are personalizing products, that are optimizing the pricing and detecting fraud and, and reducing costs. There's a significant issue here to bring in the right people, create the right decision-making processes to accelerate the ability of insurers to leverage uh, the opportunities that will come to us and the dangers that will come to us uh, with, with AI. It's a significant challenge and insurers who in many ways have been very slow uh, to adopt new technologies will need to move rapidly uh, in this new area or be left behind left behind by the, the, uh, the, the companies, the insurtechs, the fintechs that have a degree of comfort in working in this space. And there's a real challenge and insurers need to be thinking about how they collaborate uh, with those insurtechs and fintechs and IT companies to improve their position. Thank you. We're coming near to the end. And I'd first again like to thank you both for joining us. Uh, I wanna open it up to any final thoughts uh, is there anything that we didn't cover today that piqued your interest from the survey? And John, maybe we'll start with you. I think what was in the survey, and but had was sort of, I was I was surprised by uh, the the answers around the cybersecurity and the, and the sort of view that insurers executives felt they could cope with cybersecurity. I, I don't know where that strength of position comes from. Uh, and I think, again, uh, as we've just touched on, that with the use of AI, that we're all exposed. We're all exposed from a very aggressive uh, cybersecurity issue. Uh, the way that they will be able to access, uh, without our appropriate protection, access the data we have on our, on our clients, the way we actually feed AI into, way, into our decision-making processes, cybersecurity really has to be at the top of the agenda. I'm surprised anyone can feel comfortable about the level of cybersecurity protection that insurers have in place. And I'd encourage significant caution and investment to deal with that issue. Very good. Andreas. 
Yeah, I mean, to build on what John said, um, I think data and uh, technology to, to be seen as an asset, this is absolutely critical. And this will determine in future a competitive advantage. And I absolutely compliment what uh, John was saying around uh, talent and technology. I think this is a new world and we have to rethink the capability model of the future. What is needed to build careers and a curriculum in the insurance industry? And lastly, we have to look at the leadership. The leadership imperatives in today's world is different to what we used to in the last decades. And I grew up in sort of the old world and uh, transformed into the new world. And just to think about the needs that uh, Generation Z uh, people have, this is definitely something to reflect upon whether we're meeting the standards as leaders today. We also have to step up. Excellent. Gentlemen, thank you for your terrific insights today. And I want to thank you both for agreeing to participate. Uh, a copy of the survey is available to all participants on the International Insurance Society website, and I encourage everyone to read the findings. Finally, I want to encourage our audience to attend this year's Global Insurance Forum, again from November 5th through 7th in Singapore. The conference theme this year is accelerating the value of insurance, and we'll focus on insurance as a fundamental pillar of the global economy, its importance to the infrastructure of commerce, and its impact on the livelihood of individuals and their families. John, Andreas, I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you both for attending. Thanks, John. Thank you very much. See you in Singapore. See you in Singapore.